Hello everyone and welcome to the Alumni Career Management session today focusing on 21st century networking, which is good for you. My name is Perry Monaco and I am a strategic product consultant with LinkedIn Canada. I've been working with the organization for almost three years now and I'm also a Western graduate, graduating in 2000 with a Bachelor of Arts in History. It's my pleasure today to walk you through some of the things that we can uh, do to ensure that we are networking properly in the 21st century. So the first thing I think that most of us would agree with is that having the right connections can create big opportunities for ourselves, including building new partnerships, but finding business contacts can be extremely tough. This certainly isn't an easy prospect. And I think especially when we talk about doing this not only in the quote-unquote real world but in the virtual world, um, there's some specific strategies that we probably want to employ to ensure that we're finding the right opportunities for ourselves to ensure that we're creating the best opportunity for each other. So how do we start or where should we start? Think about LinkedIn as a cocktail party. Uh, what are some of the things that we would do when we receive an invitation to a party? There's a number of things that we would do in the real world, again, that we should probably be doing when uh, we are creating and joining networks uh, in the virtual world or on LinkedIn specifically. One of the things that we look at first is is what is it or, or, or who what's the purpose of the party who's going to be at the particular party and then we also think about what type of impression is it that we want to give off is this a social gathering and perhaps a little bit more casual in terms of what we would actually be physically wearing or is it much more of a formal business uh, occasion or perhaps a, a formal um, uh, a formal social uh, engagement you know there's all sorts of different types of um, parties that we could be attending and I think with that comes along a, a certain a strategy that we would employ as we um, attend different cocktail parties. And so you want to think about that as well when you're creating your LinkedIn strategy or your social media strategy in general. What is it that I want to achieve? Uh, who is going to be? Who needs to be there in order for me to achieve that particular goal? And what type of impression is it that I want to deliver? So think about for the rest of this particular session, think about LinkedIn uh, as that type of social environment, that, that, that cocktail party that we would be attending. And a lot of the strategies that I'm going to talk about um, for the remaining time that we have together are really going to follow this analogy here of us attending a cocktail party. And you'll see how a lot of the strategies are really similar to strategies that you would employ and a lot of times self-consciously um, uh, in the real world. Let's talk about LinkedIn. Let's talk about that cocktail party that we have here at LinkedIn and how big it actually is. Currently, we have more than 300 million members worldwide. We're growing at a rate of, of more than two new members per second, but specifically the student and new graduate uh, demographic is the fastest growing on LinkedIn right now, and it's growing at a rate of more than three new members per second. And more than 43% of the traffic to LinkedIn.com is via the mobile device. So our, our network is is changing from when I have started delivering this presentation three years ago to today, these numbers look significantly different. You'll notice that the largest network uh, or the largest geography on our network is the United States with over 100 million members, and that's followed by India, Brazil, the United Kingdom, and then Canada is at number five with more than nine million members. If you think about the fact that the Canadian population is relatively small compared to other countries, it's actually a really impressive stat. It also tells us that um, many of the people that you would be doing business with and or want to be doing business with are already on LinkedIn. That's an extremely high penetration number for a particular geography. There's a lot of professionals in Canada that are already on LinkedIn, so if you're not there or you're not maximizing your time there, then you can be rest assured that your competition is. So the first thing that we would probably do once we figure out that we actually want to go to the party is we would take a little bit of time to actually um, consider what we're going to wear. Do we need to wear a tuxedo? Is it very, very formal? Or is it casual? Or maybe a jeans and a collared shirt would we could get away with for, for the guys? Um, or do we want to sort of, you know, uh, do we want to wear a suit? Uh, perhaps we want to wear a suit with no tie or with a tie. There's all sorts of different things that we can do to um, ensure that 
we create that right first impression in person. And the same thing happens on LinkedIn. The number one activity on any social media network, uh, LinkedIn notwithstanding, is looking at other people's profiles, or as the media will tell us, creeping. But creeping isn't creepy. And so we want to make sure that when people are looking at our profile, that we have everything that they are going to look at in the way in which we want to have um, that type of message delivered. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is that you have a profile photo on your profile to ensure that you are again are delivering an engaging an engaging uh, type of message. Uh, you can see here that Sarah Lawless, who's an alum, has a really nice photo here. Um, a smile goes a long way. If you don't have a photo, imagine going to that. Imagine going to that cocktail party with a bag on your head. Uh, we know that profiles uh, that have photos are seven times more likely to be found in searches, seven times more likely to be looked at, and again. When we go to a social engagement, we generally want to be engaging. We want to sort of get to know who's there and be able to help us accomplish our goals. You also want to make sure that you have a crisp, punchy headline. Again, this is really your value proposition. This is your elevator pitch. This is the first thing that you would say to somebody that you don't know in terms of what type of value you bring to the relationship in the hopes that they would be able to help you achieve your goals, uh, see value in, in the particular prospect that you're uh, bringing to the table, but also uh, allow you to open the conversation and find out what their value proposition is as well. So you can see that Sarah here does not include her job title or the company at which she's working. All that information is elsewhere in her profile that's easily found. Here she's talking about the fact that she engages with organizations to help them leverage the power of social networking. Fantastic headline. You also have the opportunity to tell the full story of yourself. So you can use your summary here to be able to weave the story in and around who you are. So in this particular case, you'll notice that Sarah doesn't necessarily talk only about what she currently does today. This isn't a, an opportunity for her to just highlight what she does here at LinkedIn. She's also a LinkedIn employee. But it gives uh, her the opportunity to really tell the story about where she's been, what she's done, what are some of her career highlights, but also who she is as an individual. Uh, when we do business with people, we don't just do business with robots. We don't just do business with organizations. We do business with people. And so we like to know who those people are. And the summary statement is very different from your resume in this sense because it allows you to tell the story about who you are. The experience section below your summary is the opportunity for you to highlight specifically what it is that you've done in each of the different roles that you've held over time and some of the successes that you've, ha that you've accomplished there. You also have the opportunity to let your network speak for you. Again, going back to the analogy of a cocktail party, this is really like you're walking around the party introducing yourself to different people who are there, but you've also got a friend or a colleague who's walking along with you to help make introductions. Uh, you really want to try and leverage the people that you're already connected with so that when you do reach out to a complete stranger, um, you're not doing so in a cold call type of manner. Leveraging the people that you already know so that you can um, get them to speak for you, as well as trying to solicit recommendations and endorsements. Now, you, you don't necessarily want to do this um, actively, I would suggest, but um, having a third party like Chris Walsh in this particular case speak to his relationship with Sarah and how they've um, been able to work together and work together positively can help me potentially work with Sarah, make the decision to work with Sarah over somebody else who maybe has a similar skill set but doesn't have any recommendations. These can be really, really powerful. So those are the basics of one of the things, uh, the things that I think you should have for your LinkedIn profile. But now you're ready to be found. Being found does take time, however, and we need contacts right now. This is something that we need to immediately uh, take advantage of. So let's try and find those contacts on LinkedIn. How is it that we can do that? I think one of the first things that you want to um, figure out before you engage in any social media environment, especially a professional social media environment like LinkedIn, is figure out why you want to be there. What is your goal? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Are you trying to network? Are you trying to find old classmates? Are you trying to sell more widgets? Are you trying to get more and more people introduced to a new product or service that you have offered? Are you trying to recruit? 
Are you trying to accomplish some other business goal? It's really important for you to be able to define that goal. Um, write it down if you need to. Uh, I think that can really help as you build out your profile and build out your social media strategy to really be clear on what it is that you want to get out of LinkedIn. And that may very well be different from what you want to get out of some of the other social media networks that you're currently involved in. Then you also want to go ahead and find those people that can help you accomplish that goal. This is a really proactive way of being able to invite people to your cocktail party that can really move the needle for you. So search for those particular individuals on LinkedIn. In this particular case, we're, we're looking for human resources individuals. And this can really help us um, connect with people who can be um, helpful to us in, in, the, in the goals that we want to accomplish. So we just simply type in human resources up here in the search bar, and you'll notice that we have more than 252,000 individuals on LinkedIn within our network that have human resources on their profile. And you'll notice over here that it will tell you that Heather in this particular case is connected to us via the second degree. We'll identify here uh, people who are connected to you via the first degree, second degree, third degree, or share a group membership with yourself. In this particular case, instead of going ahead and either sending a connection message to Heather or sending her a message directly, what I would suggest that you do is find out who those people are that are connected to Heather that you're also connected to. There's a reason why she's a secondary connection. You have some common acquaintances. You have some common connections on LinkedIn. Find out who those people are and either reach out to those people for an introduction or mention to Heather in your connection message or a message to her that you know people that used to know her or still do know her and that you wanted to reach out um, and, and have a, a discussion. What you also want to do is potentially lever, leverage people who went to the same school. So people who also went to Western, generally speaking, are going to be really open to speaking to somebody uh, who is from Western themselves or graduated from Western as well. You'll notice that in the left-hand uh, rail here, you have the opportunity to go ahead and narrow down your searches using some of the free search facets that we have available to you based on your relationship to those individuals, where they're physically located, what their current company is. Maybe there is a particular uh, organization out there that you want to network with a little bit more, um, and also some of the industries that they currently work in. There's a lot of other search facets that are available to you. Some of them are available for free. Some of them require a paid membership, but really um, uh, experiment here. Take advantage of the search capabilities and realize that the people who can help you ac accomplish your goal are likely out there. You just need to find them, and finding them proactively can be a really valuable tool for you. You also want to make sure that you take advantage of the groups that are available on LinkedIn. There are over 1.2 million groups on LinkedIn right now, and those groups can be um, defined by both personal and professional um, themes, um, and it's up to you to join the groups that are most relevant to you, uh, the ones that have uh, an interest, uh, ones that you have an interest in, but also ones, again, that contain a group of individuals that are very focused on a particular theme that can help you accomplish your goals. So again, relating back to what it is that you want to achieve on LinkedIn, try and find some groups that contain these types of individuals, these thought leaders that can help you accomplish your goal. You have the ability as an individual LinkedIn member to join up to 20, or excuse me, up to 50 groups and 50 subgroups. Um, so take advantage of those group memberships um, and join up to the, that 50 number. You also want to make sure that you're focusing on quality, not quantity. Um, your network doesn't necessarily um, have to be that 500 plus or up to the maximum of 30,000. It really isn't about how big your party is. It matters who's at your party. Sometimes having a lunch with one individual that can be really, really um, uh, that can be that key individual who can move the needle for you can be just a really powerful business meeting versus going to a larger party where maybe there's 5,000 people uh, and maybe you don't really have any quality conversations with those particular individuals. Consider the size of your party and consider who's at that party. Um, that's what really matters. So um, it's not about connecting with every single person out there. It's about connecting with the right people who can help you accomplish your goal. Now, not everyone part of your network is going to uh, be directly involved with the accomplishment of your goal, um, but every single person put together <clears throat> can be very, very 
um, helpful to be able to um, make some introductions for you. So definitely take advantage of leveraging your relationships that you made um, throughout your time at Western University. That would be a great first place to start if you haven't started building your LinkedIn network already. Um, networking with those fellow alumni to take advantage of that, that common relationship that you have in person can help you take your network to the, to the next step. You also do want to think about the long-term implications here of who you connect with. Um, again, it's not about the, qu the, the quantity, it's about the quality. Sometimes connecting with every single person that you know today may not necessarily be the smartest move if down the road those particular individuals uh, are, are ones that you don't necessarily want to have in your network. So can really consider when you receive a connection request or when you want to send a connection request to somebody as to whether or not you actually want them at your party. Now all sorts of different rules exist here that people create for themselves. Um, but it really from a best practice perspective, from LinkedIn's perspective, it's totally up to you as to who you connect with, who's in your network, and how you decide to connect with people really is up to you. You do have the ability to control your network and your network size over time. If you decide to connect with somebody today, you can sever that connection in the future. We don't notify the person that you've done so, of course, um, but it is important to recognize that you do have control over your network. Additionally, you also have the opportunity to accept or ignore an invitation that you receive. <clears throat> if you choose to ignore the invitation, again, we don't notify that individual that you've chosen not to connect with them. So think long-term about your connections. Think about why you want to connect with this person and what the value proposition is. It's not always about how they can help you. Sometimes it's also about how you can help them. You also want to identify the network hubs. And in this particular case, take advantage of the data that we deliver to you. When you visit your profile or you visit someone else's profile, you'll notice on the right-hand rail there is information there that tells you how you're connected to that individual, what are some of the commonalities that you have with that particular individual. Perhaps you share the same industry, perhaps you share the same university, uh, perhaps you share the same connections. Leverage those particular uh, data points and also take a look at your network. Uh, we will, there are places within LinkedIn that allows you to take that 30,000 foot view of your network and determine what your concentration is in terms of industry or uh, alma mater, all types of different things that you can say, you know what, I'm a little weak in this particular area over here. I need to go and find some more people to sort of bolster a particular industry or a particular alma mater that maybe I haven't necessarily been focusing on. The last thing I want to suggest about how to find contacts really is perhaps um, surprising to some of you who are listening to this, but um, especially since I do work for LinkedIn, but I think it's really important for us to make sure that we do leave the office. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this particular session, um, everything that happens on LinkedIn or social media in general is, is, is what I believe to be an extension of what we do in real life. Um, this is perhaps something that you know could be a little bit foreign to people or perhaps is a little bit scary. But again, when you try and think about LinkedIn or social media in general is really what we do every single day, looking at other people's profiles would be the same thing as looking at somebody as they approach you for a conversation, um, all sorts of different things. Um, it's really important for us to, to recognize that what we're doing in social media, what we're doing on LinkedIn from a professional networking standpoint is something that we should also be doing um, in our day-to-day, -day, and that would require us to actually leave the office. So don't spend five hours a day on LinkedIn. Don't spend all of your time in front of your computer networking in that way only, exclusively. You want to make sure that you're also identifying individuals that you can go and meet and that you can go and interact with. Nothing is ever going to replace networking in person, and so we want to make sure that we are recognizing that and that we take advantage of that. It's def this is definitely a big part of networking in the 21st century, is to actually do it in person. I think as we move more and more into the digital age, those individual networkers who take the time to, in, to network sort of quote-unquote traditional, traditionally, um, I think you're going to see that the, move, the needle will move even more for you. So now that we've done our research and we've found the right people to have at our party, 
let's talk a little bit about how now to engage with those particular individuals. You are at the cocktail party now. So you've taken the time to understand who's going to be at your network. You've invited the right people. You've taken the time to make sure that you're dressed appropriately and that you're delivering that right first impression. Um, you have the right people there, so how is it now that we can engage with those particular people? We're at the cocktail party. We want to make sure that people know what our goal is and that we're available to help them accomplish their goals, but at the same time, we're also looking for individuals to help us accomplish ours. We've joined the groups that we want to join, the relevant groups. Perhaps they're, you know, 50. Maybe we've only joined 20 or 10, whatever the right number is for you. Now you want to make sure that you participate in those groups. Groups are like little sub-conversations that are happening within that larger cocktail party. And instead of just being a fly on the wall, we actually want to participate. We actually want to start to share things in that group that perhaps we want to start a discussion. Perhaps we want to comment on someone else's discussion. Um, maybe we want to share an article that we think is relevant to the actual purpose of the group. There's all sorts of different things here that we can take advantage of, and participating in LinkedIn groups can be really, really beneficial for us. We also want to make sure that we get a warm introduction. And you can see here um, that this is really an extension of what we've talked about already. The idea that what we want to do is make sure that we engage with somebody who happens to be a common acquaintance or a common connection between myself and, in this particular case, Mark. And you can see that there's all sorts of people here that, that we have a common connection with. And with that, we would probably want to reach out to Samantha or Brian in this particular case, and all this information is available on the right-hand side of Mark's profile when I visit it. And instead of going ahead and just reaching out to Mark in a cold manner, um, we can leverage the people that he knows that I know that can potentially uh, make for that much more warm introduction. The other thing that we can do is reach out to somebody uh, via the in-mail tool. Um, this is an opportunity for us to use um, the, in, the, the messaging service that's available to us within LinkedIn. Now, mind you, this is a uh, part of the premium membership. Um, but what this allows you to do is reach out to somebody who you're not already connected to. One of the benefits, I think, of LinkedIn is that um, because we are a professional networking site, we don't allow just anybody to message any other person on the network. There has to be a connection there via the first degree. But in the times when there is not, we still want to be able to provide people to uh, send a quality message to somebody, and, and we have the opportunity here with Mark to be able to do that by sending him an email. So now that we've engaged contacts, demonstrated value, and started the conversation, we're definitely networking like a pro. Remember that LinkedIn isn't necessarily something that we want to be spending hours and hours and hours on every single day. But we do need to spend a little bit of time up front to make sure that we're taking advantage of all the opportunities that are available to us just the same way that we take some time to prepare before we went to that uh, very important business meeting, that networking event, perhaps an interview. We want to make sure that we're doing our research, that we understand what our audience wants to see, and that we go ahead and engage with that audience in the way in which they want to be engaged so that we're presenting ourselves in the best light possible for that particular audience. So now that we've done all that, it's our time to ensure that we engage on LinkedIn. There are three places that you can go ahead and take advantage of here. The first would be learn.linkedin.com. Uh, this is a great place for us to be able to find some information about some of the things that we talked about a little bit more in detail. You can also take advantage of learn, excuse me, linkedin.com slash student jobs. This allows us to go ahead and find jobs that require less than six months of experience, that are co-op or networking opportunities. Um, and if you're an employer, this also is a place where you can go ahead and post those types of jobs for absolutely free as well. LinkedIn.com slash alumni is a place where you can go ahead and take advantage of the alumni tool. We'll be talking about that in other sessions. But those would be the three places that I would definitely recommend all of you take advantage of. As you're ready to engage on LinkedIn, um, uh, these three places can really help you um, learn a little bit more about the goals that you want to accomplish. And with that, I'll thank you for your time. Hopefully this was helpful, 
and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.